Hey Pokemon Masters, Bird Keeper Toby here, and I have a cold. Luckily, I have the new Pokemon Daybreak update to Legends Arceus, absolutely not a DLC, to keep me company. Even though the Daybreak update was completely overshadowed by the fact that Generation 9 got announced. We were all expecting just maybe, I guess, some, like, some Legends Arceus DLC. I know I was. I was very surprised. What's this? Oh my god, it is! Yeah. What? There's a cat! Oh. There's a cat! Though we all kind of forgot that Legends Arceus did get DLC, and we got an update, a named update, which kind of implies that there'll be future named updates for Legends Arceus as well, between now and the release of Scarlet and Violet. And given that we don't have much to talk about in the world of Scarlet and Violet, and I still have loads of Legends Arceus theories, I thought I'd start off with one about Operation Daybreak. It's not an operation, it just sounds better than update. Operation Daybreak. Of course, this will contain spoilers for that update, if you can spoil an update, and I am gonna jump into it with what the heck this was all about anyway. Because on the surface, there's a mystery, and I think I've solved it. Very quickly, I did forget to mention while recording that this theory is brought to my attention by Ezekiel42 over in the Birdkeeper Toby community Discord server. You can find links to both the server and Ezekiel's Twitch in the description below. Thanks, Easy. So the Daybreak update trucks you back into the world of Legends Arceus after the events of the main story. Here, new outbreaks of wild Pokemon, including Alpha Pokemon, are happening all across the Hisui region, featuring Pokemon in locations that they wouldn't normally be in, like Zerua in the Obsidian Fieldlands, these first appearing on Romanus Island. Mai and her Munchlax are very suspicious about this scenario because they have no idea why these outbreaks are happening and oddly enough, her Munchlax is able to detect where these outbreaks are going to happen whenever it's full, as if it's got some kind of scent detecting smell that's detecting the scent of an outbreak of Pokemon. So you begin your investigation by researching the outbreaks across the Hisui region and along the way you speak to many of the Wardens including Meli and Leon and Kabala and everyone has a different theory on why these outbreaks are happening. Some people suggest it's because of the rain. A lot of the outbreaks are only happening during rain, apart from the Albasta Icelands, where they're happening because of snow. That makes sense, because it's colder there, so it wouldn't rain, it would snow. However, there are other theories. Adam and Iridia suggest that perhaps it's some kind of test sent forth by the almighty Sinnoh, Arceus, or perhaps Dialga and Palkia in response to their presence. Kabbalah specifically mentioning Palkia. Meli suspects these Pokemon are outbreaking in honor of him, which I think is very unlikely. Leon thinks that it could be the geology is just causing the mass outbreaks to happen. And in the end, once we've done all of our research in Operation Daybreak, our main characters stand in the Obsidian Fieldlands, our hero looking out onto the horizon where we learn nothing. Maybe these things are just happening because, I don't know. Arceus? Seriously, this whole investigation ends, this update ends with us having no idea why these outbreaks are happening. But I have an idea. See, the outbreaks are just one part of the new requests that come with this update, or you're sorting out these outbreaks as a result of requests from the various characters. There are another kind of request that happens, and that is the request of battling. There are a number of battles you can partake in, both in the training grounds and against Arceus, where you can, like, I guess, test your skill and improve how strong you are. These things are all very good. However, there is one other type of request that seems to have snuck its way into this update. As a result of updating your game, to this version and giving it the outbreak update, you get access to 27 new requests across Jubilife Village. Some of them are part of the story of this, uh, dealing with the outbreaks, and again, the other half are dealing with new challenges to get stronger. But there is one that is just like an ordinary request that you get in the main story where you're helping out a villager, going out into the field, getting something for them, bringing it back. It's just like a regular request and it stands out like a sore thumb because it's not part of either of the other two categories. It's not part of the story and it's not a big challenge for you. And it's given to you by a completely random NPC. Request number 103, Digging for Tomorrow. The character of Kochika gives you this quest, and it's interesting to note that Kochika was actually part of the main Legends Arceus story. He's one of the people that appears from another region that Kamado tells you on Prelude Beach. These people have come to live with the Galaxy Expedition team. So it's just interesting to note that it's a named character from the main story, even though the character model is very, very generic. So definitely not like an ancestor to anyone, but the request he gives you, Digging for Tomorrow, is sending you out into the Orberg Tunnel, the area that will become the Orberg Tunnel in the future of Sinnoh. 
It's known simply as Orb Borrow Tunnel in the time of Legends Arceus, and he says that there's a rampaging Alpha Onyx, and could you go and deal with it? So, like many requests that you'll have done before at this point, you go out there, and sure enough, there's a rampaging Alpha Onyx. It's an interesting Onyx. You can battle it, but you're not allowed to catch it. You have to battle it and defeat it. It's level 60. There's nothing particularly special about it, and when you defeat it, Kochika appears and says, hey, thanks for beating that Onyx. Hey, I, I know it's an Alpha Onyx, but I think it just wants to dig around the tunnel. Maybe I'll dig with it. Isn't that lovely? He comments to say that if they find good enough rock in the tunnel, that people might use it to create statues of Pokemon, and that Leon said there was coal around here. And wait, hang on. What did he just say about statues of Pokemon? He says that if the people of Isui had access to good quality rock from inside the Orboro Tunnel, that they would make statues of Pokemon. This request is completely random compared to the other quests. The other ones, again, they're all about the story or they're all about challenges. This one sticks out like a sore thumb because of how ordinary it is. Who is Kochika? Random village person. What's the deal with an Alpha Onyx? I don't know. It's not tied to the story, except it is. Statues of Pokemon may be the true reason as to why we're seeing outbreaks across the Hisui region. Statues. He specifically mentioned that the people of Hisui would make statues of Pokemon if they could find good enough stone underground. Does that remind you of anything? In Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, if you go to the Grand Underground, one of the new features they introduced for this game, the game coming out just two months before Legends Arceus, they introduced statues. Statues of Pokemon, specifically the color ones that you can get that are the same jade color as the statues of Pokemon we see on the top of the Galaxy Expedition team building. These kinds of statues can be created for secret bases in the Grand Underground because of the stones that you can dig up under there. And the function of these statues? When you put them in your secret base, you can attract certain kinds of Pokemon hordes or outbreaks of Pokemon into the Grand Underground, into the Pokemon hideaways. It may be the case that this seemingly completely obscure request from a random person, that this is the most important one that explains the entire story, because none of the main characters have any idea how they're happening. It just ends with them asking the main character about time travel and what the future's like, but if they wanted to know what tomorrow was really like, they should have done the Digging for Tomorrow quest, because everything goes full circle with that quest. There are actually two other bits of evidence that tie into this. One, it's Maya's Munchlax who's able to detect this, and Munchlax has a pretty significant role in the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and Brilliant Shiman... Shinamond? Brilliant Shiamond and Dining Pearl? Because in Diamond and Pearl, Munchlax was notoriously hard to get hold of, only available at a 1% chance through honey trees. But in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, they sort of featured Munchlax as the main Pokemon for the hideaways underground. But that's supplementary evidence. The final bit of evidence is that this Operation Daybreak begins with you visiting an outbreak of Zerua on Romanus Island. And Romanus is also a new area to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl that wasn't in Diamond and Pearl. In Diamond and Pearl, it's the Pal Park, but in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, it's the Romanus Park. And in order to access all of the various statues of legendary Pokemon, you need to visit the Grand Underground and find stuff there. So I think this underground focused statue quest is a lot more than it seems. This is the true story of the new DLC or software updates. Of course, this is a pretty low stakes Pokemon theory. If you like kind of hardcore Pokemon theories, I got one about Kamado's very tragic backstory, as well as some new videos about Generation 9 and my kind of thoughts over there. I'll be back with some bigger Legends Arceus theories very, very soon. Um, thank you all for watching. I'm gonna go have a nap now because I'm not feeling too good. And of course, so hi, Pokemon Masters. Check out another video. It really supports the channel. Thank you. You're lovely. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon master! Thank you to my Patreons who allow me to do channel relaunches like this, and a special shout out to the big patrons of this month, Jet Dive, Jed Rubin, Michael Hornchu, and Pokey Bliss. Thank you.